You know, in the world of marksmanship, one of the most satisfying things for me is exploding targets. In this video, I wanna do a slingshot experiment in the area of water balloons. Stick around. <music> take a moment to greet everybody. I want to thank all of my subscribers and welcome all the new visitors here to 411 Outdoors. I hope you find this content fun and enjoyable. There's so many different targets that we can shoot. Everything from can busting to shooting foods, just different kinds of things. You can get really creative in the, the realm of creating explosive targets. You can buy explosive targets. And the key to all of this is being able to do it in the most inexpensive way. Today, I'm going to be working with a slingshot. And the target that I'm going to be using is the water balloon. Man, you can get a pack of balloons for nothing and just fill a bunch of them up with water. They're extremely satisfying to shoot. I get out here and do firearm mechanics training and shoot these water balloons. It's just super satisfying to see them explode. You can get a big pack for next to nothing and just get outside and have a ton of fun. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. I've never shot water balloons with a slingshot and I'm very curious to see how this is going to work, you know, dealing with feet per second and all of that. You can just take these water balloons, fill them up and tie them literally to anything. I've got one over here, one over here, and uh, we're gonna have some fun. Today I'm gonna be sporting my new RCZZ SUWE slingshot. I got my pouch ready, I got it full of ammo. We are ready to go. A lot of people nowadays like to talk about zombie apocalypse stuff. You can get out here and pretend you're shooting at zombie heads. I see one right now. The clay ammo did not bust it. Did you see that? The clay ammo did not bust it. Well, looks like I got to turn to some steel. <laughs> Man, that's super interesting. The clay did not bust that water balloon. <laughs> but the steel did. All right, let's take another shot. I'm gonna stick with the steel here. <laughs> that's too much fun. I'm gonna switch to a more powerful setup because I'm piercing these balloons, but I wanna see if I can get more of an explosion out of it. I'm all out of 3.8 steel, so I've got my high power torque set up here and some half inch steel balls. Let's see if we can get some wrecked explosions. <laughs> when I shoot with this setup, I gear up a little bit more with glasses and a glove. I do not wanna catch one of these on the hand or in the face. That's the bust I was looking for. This is really too heavy for clay, but I'm gonna try shooting a clay round through this setup and see what kind of response I get with this balloon. Steel did not bust it, so the clay cannot bust a water balloon, even with the most powerful setup. Back to the steel. I'm gonna shoot a piece of quarter inch steel this time. Steel too light for this setup, but just messing around with some different dynamics. So right there, I shot a piece of quarter inch steel through this very high powered setup and it did not bust that far balloon right there. I just think that's interesting as I'll get out. You can learn a lot about slingshot power and ammo shooting water balloons. That did not bust the water balloon. This is getting crazy. I thought that ricocheted, but it was a direct hit. One thing about tying these up against a tree is you really want to try to shoot at an angle where you're not shooting directly at the tree should you miss. I try to hang these things off the side of the tree and I try to angle myself to where I'm not like shooting directly at a tree should I miss the object. So let's have a little breakdown on this. Most of the time when I am shooting water balloons, I am shooting my Glock 19 CO2 gun. That shoots at about 425 feet per second. When those little BBs connect with those water balloons, it's always an explosion because of the speed. Here's a first-hand look at what the Glock CO2 can do to the water balloon. Here's the thing though, I would choose a slingshot over this any day of the week for taking squirrels and rabbits, but this just happens to have a different dynamic with the balloons because of the feet per second. A few observations that I made was no matter how fast you shoot the clay rounds, 
the clay rounds cannot bust a water balloon. There's just too much give and they don't have any weight. Another observation I made was surrounding the half inch steel. This is a very powerful slingshot and up to, I don't know, maybe 20 or 25 feet, this will sling half inch steel balls. But outside of that range, I start to lose velocity. I shot that one balloon at about 35 feet away with my half inch steel and that did not bust the water balloon. It did not have enough feet per second to do it in spite of the fact that it was this big massive steel ball coming at it. Now within 20 to 25 feet, the half inch steel ball caused a massive explosion. It wrecked the balloon. If I'd have had some 3.8 steel with me today, I think that would have been optimal with the setup I have on most of my slingshots. I just didn't have any. But I'm glad I didn't have any because it forced me to kind of check out the dynamic of some other things. For example, the quarter inch steel that I used. Um, the quarter inch steel was penetrating the balloons with most of my setups, my RCZZ slingshot that I had. That slingshot is a more of a lighter setup right now. Um, I was able to pierce a balloon, but I couldn't explode it. When I used this powerful slingshot with quarter inch steel balls, it was decimating the, the, the balloons. In fact, the last two shots that you saw was done with quarter inch steel. So I think this experiment brings us a little bit more into the world of understanding feet per second and the importance of density with the object. The clay just wasn't enough to pierce an object that had that kind of give. You shoot clay at a can, it'll bust the can, but it's interesting to note that the clay couldn't bust something like that. It has a lot to do with weight and feet per second. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sure that I will be getting a lot of comments in this thread because I have so many knowledgeable slingshot friends out there here on YouTube, and I like hearing from you always. Take care.